Bismillahirrahmanirrahim to dear every colleagues that not speaking Arabic all over the world we are speaking about a hands in thyroid ultrasound speaking to you Dr. Ahmad Mukhtar Abu Dhab Assistant Lecturer of Radiology Sohal University Egypt in the beginning we want to guide our thanks to Dr. Ahmad Rafai and his lecture was the main source of this topic today as we know the thyroid is present in the front of the neck all of us know the anatomy of the thyroid is composed of right thyroid lobe, left thyroid lobe and isthmus in front this is the neck muscles and the fat and fascia and the skin and in the posterior aspect we see the great vessels of the neck the common curved artery and jugular vein this is the anatomy that we are know and in the center is the trachea if we applying this anatomy on the ultrasound, we found the next image as you see. This is the image of thyroid gland in the ultrasound. Of course, the image of any radiological image, even ultrasound or other modalities, is inverted when we see it on the monitor or on the film. For example, on my left hand is the right thyroid, thyroid lobe and on the other side is the left thyroid lobe connected in between by the isthmus as you see the usual echogenicity of the thyroid homogeneous the same on both lobes and isthmus in between there's the trachea and the air inside it and on the both side you can see the great vessels of the neck the carotid artery and jugular vein the first topic to be assessed in the ultrasound of the thyroid is the size we are judging the size of the thyroid if it's enlarged uh, by, of course, three dimensions. As any object has three dimensions, we assess the anterior posterior, the superior inferior, and side to side diameter. But which diameter is the most important for us to assess? Which diameter that I, when I assess it, I can say that my thyroid is normal or say that the thyroid is enlarged in size? If one diameter is dependable for the size of the thyroid, it is the anteroposterior diameter. It mustn't increase more than 2 cm. This means the thyroid like this is the lobe. If I assess the anteroposterior diameter and was more than 2 cm, this means that thyroid lobe is enlarged. Even if I didn't look on the other diameters. Of course, I assess all diameters all over the time, but when I can judge that the thyroid is enlarged by assessing this diameter antro posterior diameter for example this enlarged thyroid as we see and this is the diameter uh, of course I take many sections of the thyroid to assess all the diameters but the most important repeat again is the antro posterior diameter to assess if this lobe is enlarged or not enlarged alright according to this uh, we are speaking hence not in the details Thyroid disease may be diffuse or focal disease. In our topic today, we were talking about hence about diffuse disease such like Graves' disease, Hashimoto thyroiditis, Dekevan disease, or Dekevan thyroiditis. The focal uh, thyroid disease may be solitary or multinodular. Uh, this means I may uh, see just a solitary single nodule or multiple nodules within the thyroid. Parenchyma. Alright, let's begin with the solitary thyroid nodule. This sort of thyroid nodule, the most important for me as a radiologist to assess if this thyroid nodule is benign or malignant. This is the most important topic. There is a very different way in treating this patient if the lesion was benign or this lesion was a malignant lesion. What is the items to be assessed? in uh, my examination of the thyroid ultrasound we can mention this or remember it in the word of men cv right men cv m margins e echogenicity n nature c calcification and v vascularity these are the items that i must i am i must assess when i see any thyroid nodule all right let's discuss any topic step by step the first is the margin. What will be the margin in a benign lesion? The benign lesion margin, uh, as usual, must be or will be well defined. 
and if the margin was well defined and surrounded by a complete halo right complete halo around the lesion this means that this lesion is 12 times to be benign more than to be malignant this is the first step all right while in malignant lesion what will be the margin will be ill defined all right this is the first m margin right next e echogenicity in general the benign nodule steroid are hyperechoic only 5% of hyperechoic nodules are malignant this means that 95% of hyperechoic nodules are benign while the malignant nodule in echogenicity will be hypoechoic 65% of hyperechoic nodules will be malignant the next next in my word is men is the nature the nature the cystic lesion or nodule is mostly usually to be benign but the problem is that 20 to 30 percent of the papillary carcinoma cystic so the nature may be non-dependable such like the echogenicity and the uh, margin of the nodule about calcification there is a sign that when I see it this means this lesion is 100% benign it is the comet tail sign the comet at the light running the sky uh, when I see a calcification a comet tail sign this means that this lesion is 100% benign is this the only calcification that I can see in benign nodule? no there is other types such like a peripheral rim of calcification a large areas of calcification this more suggestive that this lesion is benign this means peripheral rim large areas are suggestive that this lesion is benign but a comet tail calcification is means that i swear that this nodule is benign what about the malignant calcification fine punctate calcification are more with malignant lesions and finally the vascularity the vascularity of course will be absent or a uh, very nodular in a benign nodule but the malignant nodule will be vascular as we see this table this means that all these features are suggested except of the comet tail is 100 percent sign means that this nodule is benign other lesions are suggestive so when i'm evaluating a nodule uh, and a dual in the thyroid I must evaluate all these topics all these items to be assessed and evaluated and I'm forming my image and diagnose according to every item of this let us see this image or uh, the application of these topics on uh, ultrasound images this is the comet tail and this is the comet tail sign focal of calcification and has a tail behind it this sign means that this nodule is 100 percent a benign nodule a sure sign of benign lesion this is the first sign that i must uh, know and if when i find i feel oh this is a benign lesion all right next these examples of the peripheral shell like of calcification and this is highly suggestive of benign lesion and only also a coarse uh, focus of the calcification also suggestive of a benign lesion the echogenicity this is the example of a hypochrome nodule and as we say suggestive of malignant thyroid nodule and this is example of hypochroic nodule and is a su suggestive of a benign lesion and as we say the margin if we see the margin of this lesion it's a well-defined margin when I can uh, draw the margin by a pencil, this means that this lesion is well defined. Next, what about the isochoic lesion? We speak about hypercoic and hypercoic lesion, but what about the isochoic lesion? The isochoic lesion is 25% malignant. This means uh, that I can swear it's benign or malignant, and also this means that I will need a finite aspiration cytology to assist the nature or the pathology of this lesion this example about the uh, surrounding halo around the lesion the lesion if we're applying our steps first the lesion is hyperchoic 
the margin are our defined margins and surrounded by a halo of uh, surrounding halo hypochloric halo and this is means that legend 12 time to be benign more than a malignant the vascularity this example is uh, the example of peripheral vascularity al around the nodule and they suggest this this lesion may be benign but when I see a hypervascularity involving the entire nodule or most of the parenchyma of the nodule this is highly suggestive of a malignant lesion repeat again the only sign that I swear this lesion is benign is the comet tail calcification otherwise I am assessing my nodule by the word Men CV M margin E homogeneity N nature C calcification and V vascularity. All right, this means the net result, the features of benign thyroid nodules are. We can uh, mention them as following: number one, a comet tail sign; it's a sure sign. Number two, to be cystic, total or near total. Number three, calcification may be rim or large coat calcifications. Number four, surrounded by complete halo. Five, defined, well defined margin. Six, echogenetic or isoechoic to normal tissue. And finally, a vascular or surrounded by a hypovascularity around the margin. These are the features of the ninth thyroid nodule. What about the malignant? Right. Are image different image of comet tail sign, peripheral shell like calcification, cystic nature, surrounding halo, hyperechoic halo, uh, hyperechoic and well defined, and finally peripheral vascularity around the nodule. These are types or features of benign nodule. What about malignant? Malignant nodule features will be micro calcification, malignant M, micro calcification, and margin are irregular marked hypochogenicity to uh, remember the uh, relation between M and the marked hypochogenicity I mean hypochoic lesion marked vascularity adjacent vessel thrombosis adjacent structure spread adjacent lymphadenopathy of course these are uh, associated with malignant disease in general not only in thyroid disease these are the examples of image the microcalcification, the uh, hypochoic and ill-defined margin, or the hypogenicity, the increased vascularity of the entire nodule. Uh, also, uh, as we see, the hypochogenicity and uh, ill-defined margin. These are the examples in image of ultrasound. All right, evaluation of nodules. Uh, detected by ultrasound. When I detect uh, a nodule of thyroid by ultrasound, what would I uh, what I do? If the nodule is smaller than 1.5 centimeter, just only make follow up by ultrasound. But if the uh, thyroid is larger than 1.5 centimeter, further evaluation by a fine needle aspiration cytology. This is the point. My point is, or uh, the measure, 1.5 centimeter. More than it, I'm doing fine needle aspiration cytology. Smaller than it, I just uh, do follow up by ultrasound. Solitary versus multinodular disease. In general, malignancy is common to be solitary nodule. The multinodularity usually to be a benign however about 10 to 20 percent of nodules uh, of uh, babillary carcinoma may be multicentric so uh, this is a suggestive sign but not a definite sign in diagnosis next speak about the diffuse thyroid disease graves disease graves disease is a diffuse enlargement of the thyroid gland by the color doubler, the best economic sign to diagnose Graves' disease. There is a hypervascularity of the gland. It's called thyroid inferno. Inferno means hell, a fire within the gland. The big systolic velocity uh, of the gland is more than 
100 centimeter per second while the normal gland vascularity is not exceeding 25 centimeter per second right a second definite sign for diagnosis thyroid inferno is indicator of diagnosis of Graves disease let us see image this is the uh, real sign of inferno and this is the, th the ex appearance of the gland diffusing large as we see if we measure the size of the anterior diameter will be exceeding two centimeter as we see the isthmus was usually to be thin thickened as you see the diffuse hypoechoic and homogeneous echogenicity of the gland and when applying ultrasound you find the sign of thyroid inferno right another image the thyroid vascularity are very very horrible and increasing and when we see the big systolic velocity of these vessels it will be exceeding uh, 100 centimeter per second the next disease is Hashimoto thyroiditis. Hashimoto thyroiditis is an autoimmune disease and is defined uh, is in three stages. Occurs in three stages: acute stage, or chronic, and then atrophic stage. The acute stage, the whole gland is enlarged in size and increased vascularity. And in the acute stage, we may be misdiagnosed as Graves, but in the follow-up, the chronic stage will occur. The gland will be enlarged but multiple linear bright echoes throughout the gland of hypocoque parenchyma there is a uh, lines will be within the parenchyma of the gland and multiple small hypocoque nodules will occur right and finally the atrophic end stage will be the gland will be small and atrophic and avascular heterogeneous echoes hetero heterogeneous echoes within the gland this is an example of the early stage and we see also this increase of vascularity similar to Graves disease but the follow-up will be uh, identify the next chronic stage this example the gland as you see is heterogeneous hypochoic and finally the gland will be a uh, high uh, small in size and containing uh, multiple small fine nodules the third disease of diffuse disease is Ducrevin's thyroiditis. This is an inflammation that not involving entire of the gland, but involving regions or parts of the gland. It infiltrates the gland in a non-homogeneous pattern. The ultrasound uh, gives its ordered pattern of hypochoic and hypervascular areas. This means it's diffuse gland, diffuse disease, but not involving the whole gland, involve a part of the uh, thyroid gland. This is example of the Kervan disease, as you see, if we see this area, we can consider it a normal parenchyma, but in between we can see a heterogeneous hypochoic areas in between. Of course, there is other signs to diagnose or other lab investigations and mechanical investigation, but that's only a guide for us by the ultrasound. Thank you very much to everybody, and I wish that uh, you have enjoy this time uh, wish you good luck thank you dr. Ahmad Mukhtar Abdab for more topics you can visit our uh, group on Facebook Prof Mamdouh Mahfouz students or our blog students of Prof Mamdouh thank you very much and wish you good luck